Hey, it's Sam. So for the past few days, I've been learning this deep learning framework called PyTorch. And what I like to do when I learn something new is build something with it. So I replicated a machine learning research paper with it because why not? So that's what this whole video is going to be about. It's going to summarize the process I went through, the code implementation, the challenges I faced, and what I learned. So I'm already familiar with another deep learning framework called TensorFlow and I know there's this whole debate on TensorFlow versus PyTorch but I don't really want to get into that. Personally, I use TensorFlow and its high-level API Keras and I want to quickly prototype, build and deploy machine learning models. So enough of that, let's move on to the main objective. So the paper I replicated is the Vision Transformer paper which is titled An image is worth 16 by 16 words. Transformers for your image recognition as skill. So, like the name suggests, the Vision Transformer architecture was designed to adapt to the original Transformer um, architecture to vision problems. So, what exactly is this Transformer architecture? Um, and no, not this one. So, perhaps convolutional neural networks use convolution as the primary learning layer. Transformer is any neural network that uses the attention mechanism as, as its primary learning layer. So perhaps convolutional neural networks use um, convolutions to learn um, very low level features like lines, edges to very high level features. Transformer architectures use the attention mechanism. So for example, in this sentence, the dog jumped over the fence Perhaps the word dog closely um, relates to the words fence and jumped. In natural language processing, you pre-process the input text by tokenizing it into a single meaningful unit. So the question is how do you go from an image matrix or tensor to a one-dimensional vector like text? The authors solve that using this equation which deals with patch embedding where the input image is converted to a sequence of patches. Then using token embedding, the patches are converted to fixed dimensional feature vectors, also known as tokens. Interestingly, this can be achieved using the convolution operation in convolutional neural networks. Finally, position embeddings are added to retain positional information so that the architecture knows what order the patches come in, as in part 2 comes after part 1, and so on. Together with token embedding and position embedding, the vision transformer model is able to effectively learn presentations that are suitable for downstream tasks. Okay, we've represented our input data as an embedding. The next part of the architecture is a transformer encoder which consists of stacking together equation 2, representing the multi-head attention, and equation 3, multi-layer perceptron. Equation 2 represents a multi-head attention wrapped in a layer norm or layer normalization layer with a residual connection. The multi-head attention tax is to calculate which patch of an image is most related to another patch, eventually forming a learned representation. And the task of the layer norm is to reduce the data samples into a smaller distribution. And finally, the residual connection where the input to the layers gets added to the output of the layer. In equation 3, the multi-layer perception can refer to almost any combination of multiple layers, and it follows a pattern like linear layer, nonlinear layer, linear layer, nonlinear layer. And the nonlinear layer used is the JLU nonlinearity. Equation 3 can also be replicated with PyTorch as follows. Finally, we have created equation 2 and 3, and we can go ahead and create our transformer encoder by using a series of alternating layers of MSA and MLP blocks. Okay, that's it. Alright, so moving on to the challenges. The first challenge I faced was actually understanding the paper. Most research papers contain technical jargon, so you won't actually understand it when you read it for the first time. You might want to reread it to get a grasp of what it all means. Second one is mathematical background. Some research papers like this one contain a lot of equations, so you might want to brush up on your math concepts like linear algebra and calculus. Second one is implementation, which required that in order to implement these equations, I needed to learn PyTorch, which I did. 
And the fourth one is computational costs or uh, computational resources. I tried running this code on my laptop, it crashed for a couple of times, and I moved to cool up. Um, yeah. All right, so what did I learn? The first thing I learned is that everything is learnable. The second one is break problems down into simpler forms. The third one is to brush up on the basics. Basics always matter. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. This was a whole lot of fun. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.